and welcome back to another Fabric Fridays video. Um, I'm so excited for this new series and last week I did a video on cotton and I will link it up here if you want to watch it. However, I decided that I'm going to go back kind of and do some basics about fabrics. So this video is on woven versus knits and the difference is enormous and it is very important to know the difference between these fabrics and the difference between each type of fabric within that category. I don't know if that made sense right now, but hopefully by the end of this video that will make sense. Alright, and again, welcome to my channel. Please hit that subscribe button and check out some of the other videos on my channel. So let's dive right into it and we're going to start with the main difference between a knit and a woven fabric. So a knit fabric is con one continuous strand of fiber, or I shouldn't say fiber, one continuous strand of thread that is continuously looped around each other to create that knit fabric, while woven is typically two threads that are crossing each other along the cross grain and the grain. Um, this is also known as the warp and weft. The cross grain is the weft and the grain is the warp. And um, what this really means is just it signifies the direction in which the threads are going because the grain runs um, vertically and the cross grain runs horizontally and that's the direction in which these threads uh, move and this really help this really has a significant effect on the stretch of the fabric because wovens are not typically very stretchy. They might stretch a little bit on the cross grain, but for the most part, wovens only stretch on the bias, which is a 45 degree angle from the salvage. If you don't know what a salvage is, I can include a video that will go in a little bit more depth on all these different terms up here in the corner. However, the salvage is the raw edge of the fabric that is created during manufacturing. A popular example, or a well-known example, I should say, of uh, the bias is the bias cut dresses of the 1920s. It was a big thing cutting um, dresses on the bias for many different reasons. It was just very flattering, um, but they used that. So that's an example of bias cut. If you want to research that a little bit, you can. Uh, for knits, knits are very stretchy. Of course, they stretch in, almost, in basically every single direction. I do not recommend cutting any knit out on the bias because the bias is going to be stretchier than the fabric normally would be, and it can cause a lot of problems in your design. It can make it sag in places you don't want to sag, or it can really stretch out the fabric. So it's not a good idea to cut or stretch fabrics on the bias that are knits. Um, wovens, it's not that big of a deal, but for knits, it is important that you keep uh, away from the bias. Uh, if you have a fabric that, a knit fabric that maybe isn't as stretchy as you want it to be, you might be able to get away with cutting it out on the bias. However, because knits are very stretchy, that means they're not quite as durable, and they, over time, they tend to stretch out which is why um, your swimsuits sag after a year. I know I, my swimsuit bottoms after a year I have to get new ones because they start to sag and nobody wants a saggy butt. Um, but typically knits are used a lot for swimwear like I just said and they are also used a lot for like winter wear like sweaters and um, different active wear. Some more characteristic differences between wovens and knits. We're going to start with wovens. Wovens are more durable, like I mentioned briefly before, knits um, tend to wear out um, easier over time where wovens do not, and that's because of the way they are woven together. They are strong, stronger and more durable and tend to uh, not absorb uh, moisture quite as much because the weave is tighter. Uh, of course, knits have a looser weave. If you ever have knitted in your life or crochet, you know that the the knitting that you're doing, the weaving on that type of structure is it's loose. Um, which also means that knits actually shrink, have a higher chance of shrinking than wovens. Wovens do shrink. I'm sure you've all thrown your cotton t-shirts in the dryer and then realized when they came out they were like half a size smaller than what they originally were, which is because of actually the fiber that is used. Um, but typically uh, knits shrink more or have a higher chance of shrinking because of that weave is so loose 
exposing them to a lot of heat over time or different circumstances, it can cause that material to shrink. Um, but then again, knits also stretch out further, which I have mentioned. Um, that's why you have saggy swimsuit bottoms or why your sweater over time just starts to get these really weird holes in them because they're worn out because knits don't last quite as long. The only downside really to using a woven, in my opinion, I prefer wovens over knits. I'm not a huge knit fan. This actually right here is a knit fabric, uh, a different kind of knit fabric. It only stretches along the uh, cross grain. It doesn't stretch on the, I don't think you can see this very well, but it doesn't stretch across the grain. It only really stretches across the cross grain and of course the bias. Um, but I typically don't work with a lot of knits just because I, I'm not a knit person. Um, I don't do swimwear and I prefer working with uh, more delicate fabrics such as chiffon and um, crepe and different fabrics like that, lightweight, very flowy fabrics. Um, and I also just find knits to be very annoying. I made a <laughs> I made a Halloween costume a few years ago now and it was a Queen of Hearts costume and this red fabric that you see on it is this stretch velvet and it is it was a pain to work with. I didn't realize at the time that it was a stretch velvet until after I had bought it and cut it which I don't know why I didn't put two and two together but I didn't and it was a pain in the butt so I don't prefer working with knits and I've lost my train of thought. Where was I? Um, my point was that wovens, uh, you do have to iron them more um, because they do wrinkle, they do crease because of the way they are weaved. Uh, they do create wrinkles um, which cause you to iron them. Knits don't do that the way they are woven. They don't have to be ironed um, and obviously you wouldn't want to iron in it anyway because again it could affect the way that the structure is, it could shrink it and other types of things. So why is it important to know all of this information? Well, again, with the swimsuit analogy I'm going to use, if you used a woven on a swimsuit, it wouldn't be very comfortable now, would it? Um, using the right type of fabric for what you are doing is a very essential part of learning how to sew. You don't want to use the right, the wrong fabric because it can really make or break um, whatever it is you're sewing. Like if you wanted to make a very flowy dress that like moves in the wind and all of this beautiful aesthetic type stuff, <laughs> you wouldn't want to use spandex or you wouldn't want to use jersey or something that is a bit heavier and knits tend to be a bit heavier because of the way they are woven. They're typically woven with thicker threads. Um, so you don't, you wouldn't want a thicker material for something that's supposed to be super lightweight. Um, and for another reason, if you're making like a corset, you don't use knits on a corset that defeats the whole purpose of a bustier or corset. Uh, you have to use um, stiffer fabrics for things like that because it has to hold its structure, it has to hold its shape of not only of the design but of the person as well because if it has no sleeves it has to have that support to stay on somebody's body and a knit wouldn't do that. Now going a little bit deeper into picking the right type of fabric, there are so many different types of fabrics and they all fall into the knit or woven category, however, each of those categories have separate categories. There are different kinds of wovens and there are different kinds of knits. Now a great example of like a, mi a misconception would be silk. Silk actually isn't technically a type of fabric, it is a fiber. Um, which I'm going to be doing a video on fibers, so I'm not going to get into it. But that's an example of what I'm talking about. So I'm going to start with different types of wovens, and the best example that I can give you about this is satin. Satin actually isn't a type of fabric. It is a type of weave. Satin is categorized by how the, fab the threads are woven together. I know. Complicated. 
complicated. Another uh, example of this is twill. Twill is not a type of fabric, it is the weave on the fabric, although it is used to describe a fabric. Like if you're like, oh, I want this fabric, you're like, oh, that's twill. So I can understand why you would think that it is a type of fabric, and it is a type of fabric, but it is more so the weave on how it is woven because you can make. Um, you can make satin and twill out of any type of fiber. Uh, three more examples of this is just the plain weave, which is what you usually see. If you walk into the Hobby Lobby, um, the, those fabrics are all broadcloth, things like that. They're all just plain woven fabrics. And then we have a basket and a lino weave. Um, basket weave is exactly what you think it is. It is, sep <laughs> it is separate of fabrics across separate threads across the uh, cross grain that go and weave in with the grain and that's what a basket weave is. A lino weave is kind of a bit more of a complicated version of a basket weave. It involves locking the threads in place by um, overlapping or more warp threads over each other. And that is some examples of different kinds of wovens. Um, some different kinds of knits is jersey, obviously jersey is very popular. Then we also have a pearl knit, a rib knit. A rib knit is often used as a decorative uh, fabric for like the cuffs on things because of it, the way it is um, knitted together, it has like ribs or um, lines across it which create a nice um, aesthetic look which is why it is used on cuffs a lot in sweaters. Some other types of knits is interlock double and terry. There are actually two different types of terry. I'm sure you've heard of French terry fabric, um, but there is also like a plain version of that which is just called knitted terry. But I think, I do believe that uh, French terry is the more commonly used um, form of terry. Pile fabrics. Um, pile just means that they have like fuzz on them, like fleece or velvet. Um, those are all examples of pile fabrics because of they have the raised fibers that make them furry. This is also how fake furs are made. They're just used, it's called a silver knit weave and it's just basically, it's just basically a longer version of fleece or velvet. It just creates those nice fake fur um, textures. But velvet actually can be a knit or a woven. Typically it is a woven. Um, however, there is stretch velvet. I have mentioned that. Stretch velvet is terrible. I would rather work with actual velvet. And actual velvet is extremely difficult to work with because you can't like just iron it normally. You have to have a special contraption to iron. You have to have a special contraption to iron it on because of the fibers that come off of it. Um, same thing with fleece. It's not quite as annoying as velvet, however it can be stretched and it cannot be. There are some more stretchier fleeces out there and there are some le lesser stretchier fleece, so it just depends on the different types of weaves because there are several variations of different types of uh, knit weaves, like the interlock is a variation of a rib knit and the double knit is a variation of the interlock. So to recap, knits are stretchy, wovens are not unless it's on the bias, 45 degree angle. Um, but there are some huge differences between them as I just stated um, and it is important to know which one you want to use for a specific garment. It is important to know what kind of each of these fabrics you want to use because it does play a role in creating the perfect garment or perfect clothing line, which is the end goal. You want to make sure you have the perfect fabric for whatever it is you're choosing to make and knowing the structure and the content and the fiber content of everything is an important part in knowing how to actually develop clothes. Um, this video I will not be getting into fiber but please stay tuned for the next Fabric Fridays video because I will be talking about different fibers and more into like the actual uh, applications of fabrics. So um, that will not be next week's video because I'm alternating, so I'm doing Tuesdays and Thursdays, so it'll actually be two weeks from now that that video is put out, but please stay tuned for next week's video as well because I'll be doing uh, welt pockets. Um, actually, the outfit that I am doing with the welt pocket is right here. Um, it's probably a little bit tricky to see because um, it's all made in the same fabric, but the welt pocket is right here. Um, it's 
I use to tie my robe together. So please stay tuned for that. I look forward to explaining it to you guys. And yeah, um, again, don't forget to subscribe, check out my other videos, hit that notification bell as well if while you're at it, um, and I hope to see you guys all next week.